to include other cultures, to include other history. I was a history major. Until I got to UCLA, the only history I, I ever studied was wars or dead white guys. That's the only history we ever learned. That's the only history we ever learned. Like, there's no, never a woman that's important. There's never a person of color that's important. And my gosh, if she's a woman and a person of color, then she has no importance at all. There, movement history. I didn't learn anything about movement history until I got to UCLA. We're told that, that the government is our panacea for everything. That we have to trust all the white guys in the government. And I'm sorry, I, I see there's a lot of white men here. But you're not, you're, I'm not talking about you. I'm, not, I'm only talking about some of them in the robber class. So I, I love, I love men. Of all colors. So, I hope I, I hope I don't offend you. Because it's not meant to. And now I forgot what I was talking about. So, okay, let's go back to my myth. The second Robert class myth is that elections matter. <laughs> now, somebody named Emma Goldman, who is a woman that you probably didn't learn about in history, she was an anarchist revolutionary, and she said that if elections matter, or if elections really brought change, they would be illegal. They would make them illegal. Okay, and so the third robber class myth is that in the robber class, there's a difference between Democrat and Republican. The fourth robber class myth is it's noble to die in robber class war. The fifth robber class myth is the Federal Reserve System cares about you. <laughs> that always gets the biggest laugh. <laughs> Money. And then there's a corollary that it's either federal or reserve, that they do have any reserve. And the sixth rubber class myth is it's a privilege to pay taxes to the rubber class. The seventh rubber class myth is health care, quality education, housing, and healthy food are also privileges for us. They're privileges for us. For the rubber class, they're human rights. And we're told, we're told if you don't have one of these things or any of these things, then there's something wrong with you. Not that there's something wrong with the system, but there's something wrong with you if you don't have one of these things. That you don't work hard enough, you're not smart enough. You know, there's something wrong with you if you don't have one of these things. Instead of challenging the system about that. The eighth rubber class myth is America has a free press. The ninth rubber class myth is the environment who needs it. <laughs> when in reality, everybody does, even the rubber class. <laughs> and you know what gets me is they have children and grandchildren. And it's all about immediate profit to them. You know, screw future sustainability. You know, screw your, your children and your grandchildren. We're going to rape this earth for every last thing we can get out of it. And we don't care who has to die. We don't care who has, what price the environment has to pay. We want our profits right now. And the 10th rubber class myth, which my brother in the back is going to like, 19 Muslims with box cutters caused 9-11. Now, is, am I saying that 9-11 that was an inside job? Maybe, I don't know. But what I am saying, the first myth, America is the greatest nation in the universe, that's our foundational myth. That's the myth that causes us to believe the official story of 9-11. Why would we believe anything that comes out of the Bush administration? Why would we believe any, just automatically trust something our government tells us? In other countries, they don't understand this about us. They have healthy skepticism about their government. They don't believe anything their government tells them. They actually do research. You know? And if, and if they don't like something, they'll protest. Not just like protest on a Saturday 
friends that George Bush stole. Oh, that's, gosh, that's really too bad, but American Idol's on tonight. You know, so, so that's what leads to, to believing that 19 Muslims with box cutters caused 9-11. And, you know, people say, oh, don't be a conspiracy theorist. Well, how can you be a coincidence theorist? Yeah. You know, there's so many, so many things that are wrong about what happened on 9-11. And we need a valid and independent investigation. Not that sham of a monster. You know, what if we had what gone in a different direction? What if, if we had really said, wow, I wonder why, even if it was Osama bin Laden and 19 Muslims, what if we had have said, wow, what caused them to do this? Not like, oh, they hate our freedom and democracy, you know? <laughs> If, if that's true, why are we over there trying to impose our freedom and democracy on them? You know? We're going to give you countries that didn't have anything to do with 9-11 something you hate. And that will make you love us even more. You know? So, so whether you believe, you know, that... For, I, I have two extremes for my 9-11 theory. The one extreme is that it's the official story. That's an extreme. The other extreme is like Dick Cheney was sitting in his bunker, you know, planning it between heart attacks. But that's one. That's one, you know, train Muslim supply. That two, anyway. So those are the extremes. I don't believe either one of those extremes. But whatever it is, and somewhere in between, my son has been over 5,000 other Americans, if you believe that official story, is probably way more. Tens of thousands of Americans wounded, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, um, all other kinds of war-related suffering. Nobody comes back on the stage. Nobody comes back the same way we sent them. But not only that, over a million Iraqis dead. Not only that, four to five million of them displaced in their own country or in other countries that are already stretched to the limit by refugees, Palestinian refugees. So, and then Afghanistan, and continuing, and Afghanistan and Pakistan, instead of saying, let's change, Barack Obama said in his inaugural speech, we will not apologize for our way of life. You know, maybe if we did, millions of people would be alive today. Millions of people would be <laughs> Maybe 